As you may know by now, all of the money raised from the Potter's Bar Carnival goes to local good causes and organisations. And one of the organisations that benefit from the carnival last year was the de Havilland Aircraft Museum here in South Mins. Now they have been working on a very special project for quite some time now and I'm here to find out more. With 24 fascinating historical aircrafts on display, from this original Mosquito wooden prototype to this Sea Vixen fighter, there's lots to see here. But there is one particular aircraft that we were interested in. So behind me is the aircraft that benefited uh, from that money from the Potter's Bar Carnival. And I'm joined by the curator of the museum, Alistair Hodgson. So it's, uh, just tell us about it. It's a de Havilland DH-89 Dragon Rapide, which is a twin-engine biplane aircraft dating from the 1930s. It carried a small number of passengers, maybe 10 to 12 passengers, and um, was very, very successful as a small kind of what we would call today a feeder airliner around regional airlines around the UK and around Europe, and in fact all over the world. It was very successful as an export aircraft. So money from the Potters Bar Carnival has obviously uh, gone into uh, restoring this incredible uh, plane. Can you tell us a bit more detail about that? Yes, it's, well this is a very unique airplane in our collection because it's the only one that we're restoring to flying condition. Everything oh. else is static. This one is actually fly. going to fly. This wow. is going to fly. And that means that when you're restoring it, every single, literally every single nut, bolt, wire, piece of wood, everything else has to be the right one and it has to have a certificate that says it's the right one. And you can imagine what that does to the cost of restoration. So any help we're, being, we're able to get from people like the Potter's Bar Carnival is absolutely fantastic because it goes a long way to covering our costs of this. We had to get wires and components specially made up to go on the aircraft and that's where the money went. We've had wires down on the tail which support the tail. We've had control wires in the cockpit and control wires that go through the wings all specially made up and that was all funded by the Potter's Bar Fate. Tell us how important those control wires are, if maybe somebody doesn't know. If you don't, the, the tail wires hold that they hold the tail together. They basically so take the load important. of the tail. When the, <laughs> yeah. when the, yes, no wires, um, tail falls off in flight, that Ooh, sort of okay. thing. The control wires in the cockpit are for, or for around the rudder pedals, around the brake pedals. Um, again, every single component in the aircraft, there's, no, there's nothing there for show or for ornamentation. It's all there for a purpose. If you don't have it, the aircraft can't fly. So every single wire every single component like that is essential. That is just brilliant. Now this is really exciting because we're actually in an area that the public don't normally right. see. That's so right. when people come to this uh, museum, what, what can they see? They can see all sorts of things. They can get, for every other aircraft, they can get up close and personal to all of our aircraft. We're not like other museums where we put everything behind barriers and you're not allowed to get close and touch it. We encourage people to get up close and touch aircraft. One or two cases, we even allow people to sit in the cockpit. It's wow. One of the only places you can sit in the cockpit of a jet fighter. How about that? Uh, sadly for this aircraft, though, we can't do that because be it's being restored to fly and therefore we're governed by the rules of the Civil Aviation Authority and they say that if you're doing that, you cannot have public access to the work while it's in progress. Therefore, we have to do it behind, slightly behind closed doors. I mean, we have sort of a viewing gallery and we have a viewing area where people can see what's going on and see how it's being worked on. But they can't come up close to it and work on it because otherwise, if there was anything was wrong with the plane and it was traced to something that had been interfered with or something and, and we found that a member of the public had been in and touched it, then that would obviously be a big problem. So well, sadly, I'm all the, my best behaviour. Well, I'm sure you are, Paul. I'm sure you are. Um, so this the one aircraft in our collection that we can't let people up close to. Okay, so tell us where you are and wh what days you're open. We and are, yes, we are at uh, Salisbury Hall in London Coney, which is just off Junction 22 of the M25. We're very easy to find. We're just on the road that goes off to South Mims, the B556 off to South Mims, very close to Potter's Bar indeed. We're open um, six days a week. We're open Tuesdays until Sundays from 10.30 in the morning until, until 5.30 at night, last admission at 4 o'clock. Okay, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for talking to You're us. Welcome. You did mention we can, I can sit in one of the, maybe not sit in the cockpit of this one. I think I'm off to go and uh, find a plane and uh, let's, sit in the let's cockpit. Let's sit you in a seat. Shall we do it? Shall let's we do, go that. do let's that. that? Let's go, let's go do, do that. that. Yeah. Now, believe me, sitting in the cockpit of a fighter plane is pretty exciting, but there's plenty more activities for you to get involved in with the museum if you'd like to volunteer for anything from gardening to engineering to archivists. So give them a call to get involved. And if you are interested in volunteering your services elsewhere, why not at the carnival? We always need people to act as ushers, deliver programs, and a whole lot more. So contact us via the website.
podcastbarcarnival.co.uk and we'll see you at the carnival on Sunday, June the 11th.